Thank you very much for joining us for our Career Conversations podcast. And uh, we're thrilled today to be joined by Dr. Luis Meja from um, Nature Neuroscience. Uh, Luis was one of our former Beckman uh, postdoctoral fellows. And so Luis, we're really interested to hear how you got interested in science, how you got into our award program, and then what you are doing now um, as an editor at a journal. So. I'll kick it over to you, but if you could kind of start at the beginning, you know, what was what was the key that got you interested in science to begin with? Sure, thank you for, for having me. Um, I would say that my, uh, my upbringing was sort of surrounded by science. So both of my parents are trained as food scientists. So, you know, growing up, we had a lot of um, science related discussions uh, in the house and um, I think that that's what initially put me on the path towards a career in research. Um, and then perhaps more importantly in college, while I was pursuing my undergraduate degree at the University of Illinois, I became very interested in neural mechanisms of uh, psychiatric disease or mental illness. And so during my undergraduate degree, I focused on courses that were largely in neurobiology. Um, and um, from there, I knew I wanted to pursue a, a doctoral degree, so um, I uh, attended Harvard to um, study neuroscience, to uh, receive a PhD in neuroscience, and um, from there, I went on to do a postdoctoral uh, fellowship at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory, and throughout my, my um, path, I focused you know, heavily on uh, neural circuits that are relevant to uh, mental illness. So how did you get sort of from Illinois to Harvard to Cold Spring? Can you just chat about that a little bit for people who are maybe just getting sure. started? So when I was in Illinois, I was I knew that I wanted to go to a graduate school that placed uh, emphasis on neuroscience. And there are you know ways to search you know online. Uh, about the different programs that, uh, you know, research institutions offer. And one of them was Harvard. And, um, you know, I, I applied to other graduate schools as, as well, and then, you know, decided on uh, where I wanted to go. And I really made the decision based on the scientists who were there uh, at the time, uh, because, you know, eventually you will work in one of those labs. Um, so you, you know, sort of make the decision based on what the environment is, who, who are the individuals that are there. Uh, and that's how I ended up at Harvard. And then uh, similarly for my uh, postdoc, I wanted to uh, actually delve more into a, a, a bit of a different area of neuroscience, which is more having to do with uh, manipulating and, and imaging uh, neural activity in, in vivo in mice. Um, so I you know, search for institutions that would have um, researchers performing that kind of work. And uh, Cold Spring Harbor Lab had a, a great number of neuroscientists. And that's how that's how I, I ended up there. So you didn't know your mentor at Cold Spring Harbor before you made the jump or how did you get? That's correct. Yeah. So we uh, we did not know each other. No, we uh, you know what I did in the as part of the process is to contact uh, lab heads, contact professors, uh, essentially by email and then eventually by a Zoom conversation. Um, but yeah, I, I did not, I knew of them based on their research and uh, and some of the some of the people who I also considered to uh, for my postdoc, I knew them from you know friends uh, or or simply from from their research. Seems like a big leap. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Did you enjoy the lab culture and stuff? Did you feel like everything worked out and you ended up in a place with a good fit? Yeah, I did. Um, so for my postdoc, I, I uh, worked in the lab of Boli at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. And, uh, you know, the lab is very well poised to answer these kinds of questions and mice with behavior. Um, and with, you know, various tools to manipulate uh, brain activity and also to record brain activity. So it was, um, 
certainly a very good way to get into that uh, area of neuroscience. Yeah, and that was the premise of the funding that you received from the Beckman Foundation was to work on that postdoc. Can you say a little That's bit? Right. Um, did you just do the one postdoc for yes. a postdoc? And then, and then what happened and how did you get into being in sort of an editorial role? I yeah, that's a good question. So, um, I mean, first I can say that in the lab, we looked at uh, a subpopulation of neurons in the brain of mice uh, that are involved in the decision to approach a reward or to avoid an aversive uh, stimulus. And, you know, we examined this using um, manipulate, selective manipulations of neural activity. And, uh, also, we observed the activity of these neurons while the animals were performing their uh, behavioral task. Um, during my postdoc, I, you know, trained uh, substantially in this type of work, and I came to a point where I simply had to make a decision about whether to pursue uh, a job in academia or whether to pursue a job in the industry. Um, and one of the jobs that came up was one of the ideas that came up was uh, the possibility of working as a scientific editor. And uh, truthfully, the way that this came about is that I attended a career event at uh, NYU. And there uh, was an editor uh, who works still currently at Nature Neuroscience. So I met her and discussed a bit about the, you know, about the job of an editor and uh, subsequently applied to the journal. And uh, that's how I, I came to arrive at Nature Neuroscience. So what is the job of an editor? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Do do like what, what do you find really interesting about it? That's a good question. So the, the primary job of editors and including editors in Nature Neuroscience is to evaluate research. So essentially we receive many manuscripts and we read and discuss them and sort of assess the experiments that have been done um, in sort of what area of neuroscience is being uh, is being studied. And um, depending on our assessments as, as a team of editors, uh, we decide whether or not we want to pursue this particular manuscript. And then there is an entire process of peer review uh, where we um, we do this together with the neuroscience community. So we contact uh, different researchers in, in neuroscience, and we ask them if they can help us uh, review a paper, uh, assess a paper, which is essentially taking a, a deep dive into the experiments that were done, uh, the approach that was taken, and the conclusions that, that can be drawn from that research. Um, so based on that assessment from what is essentially you know, scientific peers, um, we then evaluate uh, that assessment and then ultimately make decisions about which papers we want to appear in the journal. So, you know, 90% of our time is dedicated to uh, analyzing, well, it's dedicated to evaluating uh, research projects mm -hmm. and discussing them as a team and, again, uh, seeking uh, feedback from the neuroscience community. You must get just such a wide variety of things that just yes like, do you, certainly do you know what's coming or is... so that's a that's that's an interesting point about the transition uh, for anyone who wants to uh, work as an editor. So typically, when you're doing your postdoc, you're very focused on a single line of work for the most part. So you you know you may be uh, focused on a particular part of the brain or a particular behavior or, you know, maybe a particular uh, technique. And by and large, you only have a sort of superficial exposure to other areas of neuroscience. Um, when you come into a job as an editor, that is going to broaden significantly. So uh, we, you, you know, we each have our sort of sub-specializations, uh, which are based on our expertise. Uh, but certainly the, the, the breadth of the manuscripts that we receive is, 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 uh, substantial. So you, uh, really get to learn a lot about different fields that perhaps you had not looked at, um, very carefully before. Uh, 
And the great thing is that, you know, you're sort of receiving the, the latest cutting edge uh, research that is just being done currently uh, in those fields. And, you know, in this way, you get to see the progression of the field, uh, the kinds of questions that people are interested, where the different fields are going. And over time with experience, you get to really know the community very well. Uh, and you're really embedded in, uh, you're embedded in the research, uh, just not in the lab, but you're embedded in the research uh, all day, every day. Um, and, and yeah, it actually offers a lot of opportunities for learning uh, about subfields that you perhaps had not studied. Do you think there's anything particular that you did in your training that led you to consider this career in particular? And, you know, sort of that, that thought of now you have to be almost uh, well-versed in such a, a mm -hmm. broad range of things. Well, so it, it certainly involves a kind of a love for um, learning about different projects. So again, when you're in the lab, you tend to focus on a on sort of a narrow, uh, you know, sub area of research. Um, but for me, I always enjoyed reading um, extensively on, you know, in, in, in the subfield that I was interested in, but also more broadly. Uh, in you know seeing some of these journals that may have uh you know experiments that are a bit outside my field i always enjoyed reading and you know sort of evaluating them uh by myself um and i think that in my in my case um the really the opportunity presented itself uh to apply for a, a career as an editor and you know i i felt that it would be um a, an interesting opportunity to really delve even deeper into the into the community and um yeah and i think that that's you know um sort of the the path that ultimately uh ended with me landing here at nature neuroscience do you have any other tips or advice for people who are maybe looking around you know you you said yeah. you looked at some academic opportunities and decided to go someplace else. And, you know, was that a tough decision or how did you, how did you approach that? And it is a tough decision. So, you know, everyone has to decide for themselves whether, you know, for people doing research, you have to decide for yourself whether you truly want to remain at the bench in the lab. Uh, and, you know, there are many ways to do that, um, one of which include, of course, applying for academic positions. Um, and the reality is that there are many other options as well, um, one of which is, you know, being an editor, but there are many, many options in industry uh, that um, can use the expertise of a scientist or someone who has been trained as a scientist. Um, and I think, you know, my advice is to keep an open mind um, as to the all the different possibilities that exist. Uh, you know, uh, the activities that you do or that you focus on if, if you want to pursue an academic career is a, are a bit different from if you want to pursue a career in industry. Um, so in, in the case of uh, being an editor, if anyone is interested in, in this type of work, um, uh, my suggestion would be to uh, basically immerse yourself uh, very deeply in, you know, reading the literature, getting to know the getting to know uh, the different subfields in neuroscience uh, uh, as as much you know as well as you can based on reading, uh, you know, many uh, studies, and um, also consider uh, giving you know. Uh, there are certain opportunities like journal clubs where you might assess, you actually might assess uh, a paper together with your lab mates. Um, there are, you know, of course, opportunities for giving presentations on your research, uh, speaking with other scientists about your research. And all of this will start to get, get sort of paint a picture about what an academic career would look like, uh, what a career in industry would look like. Um, and really, uh, I guess my advice would be that your training is 
is really suitable for many different uh, options. Um, so I think I would encourage uh, someone to uh, look at all of those options. And you know, of course, uh, if if um, remaining at the bench is is a good fit, then of course um, uh, you know there are avenues to apply for for a position, and then you know uh, uh, ultimately lead your own research. Um, program is certainly a, an option. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us and, and sharing about your path and what you currently do and talking a little sure. bit about a, a different kind of career option. I think it's helpful for people to to hear, like go to those career fairs and yeah, certainly. there's lots of different options out there. So go ahead and explore. Certainly, yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to say just that Word of advice? Um, uh, yeah, I think, I guess I would say um, uh, it often all boils down to talking to many individuals, as many individuals as you can. Don't be afraid to contact uh, researchers, scientists, editors, people who work in pharmaceutical companies. Don't be afraid to really just contact them and you'll be surprised at how open people are at wanting to give advice uh and you know that's something that helped me a lot in my in my uh progression uh in my career so um don't be shy try to seek out as much you know different expertise as you can and when you're making decisions about what you would like to to do great words of advice <laughs> yeah well thank you very much appreciate your time thank you thank you so much for having me